Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about what's new with Bluebeam Review 21.6. Let's click on the Help dropdown at the top, and we can update our program by going to Check for Updates. That way, everyone can get on to 21.6. And to see what's new, we can just click on Learn What's New. A new tab is going to open in Review. We can actually use Review as a web browser, as indicated by this icon right here. If you ever wanted to, you can always go to Window and Web Tab to open that manually. And here we have the release notes. So essentially, this Markups on Capture feature has been added, and it's really, really neat. We have captures, which are essentially images that are attached to our markups. So we can actually mark them up and change them in Review, which is awesome. A new feature that I'm very excited about for many of our clients is ARM processor compatibility. So now we can use Bluebeam Review successfully without any bugs and any issues on ARM-based Windows PCs, which is great. So Surface Pros and certain kinds of Windows-based tablets can now be used for that, which is fantastic. The tool chest has gotten a big revamp. A lot of different things have been added to it. Something that I've been looking forward to for many years has been the ability to set numbered keys for any other tool chest other than my tools. And now we can do that with these punch key options. We can even do things like select multiple objects all at once. And detail mode has been changed a little bit too. So lots of little quality of life features have been released and I'm very, very happy and excited for that. Then signing into review has gotten a little bit better with the Microsoft Edge WebView 2 option. And Autodesk plugins have been updated, of course. So now any Autodesk 2026 program that's listed, not just here, but in the compatibility section, uh, should be working pretty well with uh, the plugin that comes from review. So I'm going to show just a couple of things from this list of features here. And I think you guys should find them to be quite interesting. I've already created a tutorial on captures, but I'll briefly go over them. You can essentially go to any markup or measurement and right click on them. And the option for capture is right here. You can associate an image directly from a device or from your computer. Once you do that, you're going to have this icon to the bottom right of your markup. Then you can click on this and see all captures, which include images and videos that are associated with the markup. Then we can basically see this new button down here, allowing us to edit the image itself. It opens as a separate file in review, but it is technically part of the capture. We can see this little icon right here. And this icon is very special and unique. It, it seems to be clickable, but it doesn't really do anything when you do click on it. Anyway, what we can do now is basically create markups and measurements on this capture. We have a lot of options. Only a few things can't be done, such as flattening and cutting content and pasting content, because this is essentially an image. But you can see here that I can draw some lines in different spots and essentially even make text, for example. And that's how we can mark up on top of a capture. DDS CAD, Ooh, my font is massive. Let's change our font down to size 10. It needs to be even smaller. This image is pretty small as you guys can see. There we go. And then let me resize the image to the right, auto size it, much better. And so let's see what happens when we save our changes. So we're gonna click on save, close out of this. And then let's go back to the capture itself. And there it is. All the changes that we made are available and they can be modified. These are not permanent changes. So we can go back to edit. And these are markups essentially on top of a capture or an image or a video. And we can essentially modify them in this way. So very, very nice. All right, let's go back to our release notes. And the next thing I want to show is how the tool chest has been changed and revamped really, really nicely in review. Let's go to our tool chest, the toolbox icon on the left side. And here, the first thing we can see is this little search bar. As we type in a word like the word concrete, we can see that different options are now available to us. Let's open up properties, the gear wheel on the right side, and see what search term we now found. It looks like our label corresponds. And we can also search for subject and author data. Then if we click on this proofreading symbol here, we can see that its description actually has the first four letters of concrete in the word concluding right here. So you can search for parts of a word or the entire word. Let's close out of our little search. And let's look at this gear wheel to the right of our tool group. We have these next to each tool group. And now we have a lot of options that we can look at. We're going to click on this and go to detail. We've already had this before, but it's been enhanced. 
we can definitely see the dividers between the different columns here. And we can now sort the order of these columns quite nicely. So we can click and hold on the subject column. And you can see that I can move it and see a blue vertical line behind. So I can let go. And now I can put subject in between my comment and my label. We're going to do the same thing going backwards now. But before I do, we can actually sort by subject as well, which is awesome. So I'm now going to click on the subject column. And we're going to see that things are going to be changing in a second. There we go. We have to click on the word subject, not just in the empty area. And we can see that everything is sorting by either no subject or alphabetical order descending. If I click on subject again, we can reverse this. Now we're going from uh, alphabetical order ascending, of course. Excellent. Let's now switch back to subject right here. Very good. And let's move that back. I'm going to click and hold and drag it back to the left right here. Let me scroll back up and see if we can do that. Click and hold. There we go. And we're going to let go. Perfect. So lots of nice little things with the detail mode that have been enhanced. Now let's look at set numbering. Set numbering is really, really cool. For a long time, we were only able to assign numbered keyboard shortcuts to my tools, the default tool group that comes with the program. And we couldn't do it for our own tool group. But you can see here that I actually have some numbers associated with these tools. That means that set numbering, while it seems like it does nothing, assigns those numbers for one tool chest at a time. That's the incredible part. So let me go back to symbol mode and then show you all that if I go to the construction symbols tool group, I can click on its settings gear wheel and then set numbering. And there it is. Now the numbers correspond here. So I can use the fourth symbol by pressing the number four on the keyboard. Let me get rid of a tool that's actually already on my uh, keyboard. Give me one second on my mouse. There we go. Much better. Let me reset my navigation. And now we're going to type the number four. And there it is. It even highlights the tool in the tool chest and I can place it. Now number five, etc. And you can see how flawless and seamless this is to start placing your symbols with numbers onto the tool chest. I know a lot of our clients have been looking forward to this change for many years. And this is per tool group, so I'm going to go back to my own personal tool group, and you can see that the corresponding numbers in the upper right side are not there anymore. I'm going to put them back by clicking on the gear wheel and then set numbering. And there it is. Everything is numbered. How do double digits work? They're not too tough. All you have to do is type the digits pretty quickly. So I'm going to do 47. Let's see if it worked. Let me click onto my PDF. Make sure that the PDF is the active window. Now 47. And there it is. Look at that. It highlighted it. At first, it was going to the number four, but because I typed in the second number quick enough, it understood that I was looking for a double digit tool. And that corresponds perfectly with this valve. Excellent. Let's look at a few more enhancements. We can find our punch key options by going to a gear wheel corresponding with one of our tool groups, and then the edit button right here. We've seen some of these settings at the top right here, but what's new is the punch key portion at the bottom left. Before I go into more detail, I'll let you guys know that I'm going to be creating another tutorial on punch keys in particular very, very soon. So please stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching our demonstration of what's new with Bluebeam Review 21.6. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Please stay tuned for that next video on the punch keys, and I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day.